everything. Okay. Thank you. So thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Simon. So I'm a PhD student in computer science uh, in Paris, and I'm going to talk about two-sided matching markets. So two-sided matching markets are markets with two kinds of uh, two categories of agents. So for example, students in schools or uh, jobs and workers uh, or men and women. We took this example in the in the paper. And in this market, we're interested to compute uh, a matching and uh, assign uh, agents to agents using the preferences they have over one another. Okay, so here's our model. Uh, there is a graph with uh, men on the left and women on the right, and where an edge means that two persons know each other. So for example, M1 and W1 know each other, but M1 and W3 don't know each other. And using this graph, agents are going to order their neighbors uniformly at random and report this ordering as their preference list. And this is a, a matching market, and you're an evil decision maker for this matching market. And you need to choose which procedure is going to be used. So either the men or the women proposing deferred acceptance. So both procedures have been uh, defined by Gale and Shapley in 1962. And the thing is that you really like this matching uh, mu where M1 and W1 are together, et cetera, et cetera. And the question is, what should you do if you want to maximize the probabilities that mu is going to be chosen? So should you choose the men or the woman proposing different acceptance? So to answer this question, one thing we can do is to, to compute the output distribution of the men proposing different acceptance and the woman proposing different acceptance. So recall that the, the input is random. The procedure we are using are deterministic. So in output, you get something which is a distribution. And here you can read the probability that the men proposing different acceptance outputs this particular matching mu. And if you do the same computations for the woman proposing deferred acceptance, the thing is that you get exactly the same distribution. And that's the result of the, of the, of the paper. Uh, mainly our theorem uh, that is called X and the equivalence just says that the men and women proposing deferred acceptance have the same output distribution. And so in this input model, you cannot really manipulate if you only know the acceptability graph because uh, both procedures are going to output the same distribution. So that's it for the result. And now uh, for the rest of the talk, I'm going to talk a bit about the, the ideas of the proof and how we can extend such a result to some non-uniform distribution for the, the preferences. So let's go. Uh, for the proof, we're going to start with a, a little warm up and talk about stable matchings. Uh, so remember our model. Our model, we have the preference list over the neighbors. So here M1 has two neighbors. So the preference list is going to be this with probability half. M2 has three neighbors. So the, the preference list of M2 is going to be this one with probability one over three factorial. And the probability of this W2 uh, is going to be this uh, length, list of length four with probability one over four factorial. So the probability of getting this entire preference profile is exactly this small fraction I written uh, at the bottom of the, of the slide. Okay, so now that we have a preference list, we can define what stable matchings are. So a stable matching, uh, for example, mu, uh, is a matching where there is no blocking pair. So it's, it's a classical definition given by Gale and Shapley. And basically a stable matching is a matching that has no blocking pair. So a blocking pair, for example, is a pair where there is uh, both agents, for example, M1 and W2, uh, like each other and would prefer to be together rather than with, with their uh, actual partners. So in this example, M1 and W2 are not a blocking pair because M2, uh, W2 is really happy to be with M2 and prefers M2 to M1. So this matching mu has no blocking pair, so it's a stable matching. And uh, Gale and Shapley, when they define this uh, definition of stable matching, they also prove that there is always at least one stable matching. And they gave a, a procedure to compute it, that's the deferred acceptance. So the deferred acceptance comes with two variants. So the men proposing or the women proposing deferred acceptance. And in the men proposing deferred acceptance, here the men propose to their first choice and second choice, etc. And women are going to answer those uh, propositions. Uh, and when they have two proposals, they need to choose which one they reject. For example, here M3 and M5 are both going to propose to W4 at the beginning. And W4 is going to pick M3 and reject M5. And if you, if you do the, the procedure, at the end, you're going to end up with this, with this matching. So that's one stable matching because the output of the men proposing different acceptance is always a stable matching. 
And if you do the woman proposing deferred acceptance, you get a different matching. So that's uh, another stable matching, but the two could be different. And in fact, if you draw all the stable matching of this instance, uh, as you can see here, uh, you can see that it is, there is a, a nice structure. So that's what we call a, a lattice that was defined and proved by Knuth and Conway in 1976. And basically what an arrow is here is, for example, there is an arrow from this mu and this matching here. It means that both matchings are stable and all the men prefer the first one, all the women prefer the second one. And we're going to, to read this arrow mu arrow nu with this uh, new covers, this matching mu. And this is going to be useful in the, in the paper, in the, in the proof of the, of the theorem. So as you can see here, the men proposing deferred acceptance returns the, the matching on the left. The woman proposing deferred acceptance returns the matching on the right. And that's because um, this uh, procedure returns the men optimal and this procedure returns the women optimal. So uh, what we can remember from this uh, small warm-up is that there is two procedures. They return sometimes different matchings. The men proposing returns the men optimal, the women proposing the women optimal. And some technical details are that we get a lattice. Also something I didn't say, but in the previous slide, uh, M5 is going to be single in every single matching. So when you have a, a single, you're single in every single matching. And uh, this notation mu arrow nu, which is red, mu covers mu, is going to be useful for the proof later. Okay, so now let's go for the, for the proof. So remember, what we want to prove is that the probability that the woman and the men proposing deferred acceptance output this matching mu is the same. And to do that, we need to compute those two values. And we're going to use this characterization of the output using the, the fact that those two matchings are men and women optimal. So using the vocabulary of the lattice that we introduced, we said that uh, mu is going to see stable, but not woman optimal, whenever there is a, another matching mu, uh, which covers this matching mu. And symmetrically, mu is going to be stable, but not men optimal, when there is another matching which is covered by mu. Okay. So we can now rewrite the probabilities that we had on the top here, and basically says that, okay, we have these two probabilities which depend on those two. So if we want to prove that the men and women proposing deferred acceptance have the same distribution, what remains to do is to prove this equality of probability at the bottom of the slide. Okay, that was the beginning of the proof. Now let's compute those two probabilities. And we can do it with an inclusion exclusion principle. So let me explain. So here we have a probability of some big union of events. And uh, the probability of having this true is uh, perhaps there is one matching new one which covers new, another matching new two which covers new, but sometimes both matchings are going to cover new, and then we need to subtract this probability of both being true at the same time. So that's basically the inclusion exclusion principle, and we can write it for both formula here and here. And as you can see, uh, the two formula looks a lot the same. And the key lemma of our paper is that uh, if you take two matching new and new, and you compute this probability here, that's exactly the same. You get the same probability of having mu covering mu and mu covering mu. And if you look at the, at the expansion here, the, the, the formula we have on the top, those two uh, probabilities are going to be the same, those two is the same, and those two probabilities are also going to be the same. I didn't wrote it in the, in the lemma, but when you have a conjunction of those kind of events, that's also working. So the proof of this lemma is going to be a substitution in an integral formula. But uh, let's not talk about this right now. And with this lemma, we can prove, in fact, uh, it concludes uh, the proof of the theorem. We have this uh, nice equality there. Okay, so now let me give you uh, some intuition about this lemma, where it's true, how do we prove such an equality of uh, probabilities? And that is going to be used, do, done with uh, integral formulas. So this integral formula, uh, is the formula to compute the probability that mu is stable. So we're not going to give the, the formula for mu covering mu, but let's keep, keep it simple. And this formula was given by Knuth and Pitel uh, uh, to compute this in the, in the uniform setting. So there is uh, eight variables, x1, x4, etc., etc. 
And x1 is a variable which relates to how much m1 likes his partner. Uh, for example, y2 relates to how much w2 likes her partner. And this uh, factor here, 1 minus x1, y2, relates to how likely is this pair m1, w2 to be a, a blocking pair. So notice that there is no x5 in the, in the formula. That's because m5 is not matched. And so he does not like his partner because he doesn't have any. OK, so we can compute the, this, uh, this formula. You can compute the value of the integral. That's a bit painful. You can do it with a computer. But you get this ugly fraction there, which gives you the proof that mu is going to be stable in our market. So the same kind of formula are going to work for the, the properties that mu covers mu. But let's not talk about this and move on. So if you fell asleep during the proof, you can wake up now because I'm going to talk about something else, which is how to extend uh, our result to some non-uniform distribution. So recall the, the model. We have a, a bipartite graph and agents order the neighbors uniformly at random. So here, I don't know if you can see, but there is a small matrix where uh, a one means that two, uh, there is an edge between those two nodes and a zero means that there is no edge. And the ones basically mean that we are using the uniform distribution. And the way we're going to generalize this and we're going to get uh, a weighted bipartite graph and the weights are going to be on the edges of the bipartite graph. So here we have ones, twos, threes, and fours. And the biggest the value is on the edge, the more likely it is that two, two person are going to like each other. So how did you define, did we define this uh, distribution? Uh, we did with uh, some experimental uh, simulations and because this was true in the uniform case and we did a lot of experimenting to, to find this, uh, this kind of distributions. Okay, so now let me give you the, the formal definition of the non-uniform distribution. Uh, and that's what the paper calls symmetric anti-popularity preferences. So I copy pasted the, the matrix there. I uh, hope you can see better. And the edge, the edge of the graph are going to have weights and those weights are popularity. So here there is a popularity of three between M1 and W1. And each person is going to sample a preference list using those popularities, uh, using the, the following procedure. So each person, so let's take the example of W2, is going to pick her least favorite neighbor uh, with a probability which is proportional to one over the popularity. So here, for example, W2 picks her least favorite neighbor and it's going to be M1 with a probability which is proportional to one over three. And then she's going to pick her second to least favorite neighbor without replacement and using the same probability as before, etc. up until you get a, a full preference list. That's a formal definition. And if you want some intuition on uh, what kind of properties this distribution uh, gets, uh, let's look at the, the, this probability. So what is the probability that W2 here, this column, prefers M1 to uh, M2? And this probability is exactly 3 over 3 plus 2. Uh, we can use the popularities to compute this uh, probability and that's 0 0.6. And if you compute the probability that uh, M M2 prefers W1 to W2, that's, ex that's exactly half. And that's uh, good because both M W2 and W1 have the, have the same popularity. So that's the definition of, uh, of the, of the non-uniform distribution. And one question is, how, do we, how does the proof general, generalize this to this uh, new distribution? And that's quite simple. In fact, uh, we had, a, if you remember, a formula which was an integral formula. And what we just need to do is to, to add some coefficients and some powers to those variables there. And those coefficients are going to be fractions of uh, popularities. And exactly the same, everything works the same and you just uh, get uh, the same proof for this new non-uniform distribution. Okay, so that was for the non-uniform distribution. Uh, let's go for the, the conclusion. So in summary, uh, we started by uh, finding some ex ante equivalence uh, numerically using experiment on this. Uh, uh, and we found that the two procedures, men and women populating default acceptance have exactly the same output distribution. That's intriguing. And so uh, to prove this, uh, we use the fact that, okay, there is a, 
a lattice of stable matching, we can compute the probability of both, uh, both procedures using integral formula. And this can also be extended using non-uniform distributions. Okay, so for some future work, uh, some ideas might be to, to study some other procedures because people have studied uh, procedures that are not uh, the men or women proposing default acceptance, but some fair um, procedures where you, you pick a stable matching which is not men or women optimal, but which is uh, in, the, in the middle of the, in the lattice to be fair both to men and women. And numerical experimentation suggests that this should be true also for some of those procedures that have been studied. And another question would be uh, what, could, what kind of economic interpretation we can make with this result? So perhaps uh, can we say that as choosing between the men or the women default acceptance does not um, have any, uh, does not discriminate any uh, minority group of the, of the market, perhaps that would be possible. Okay, thank you for the talk. Uh, thank you for uh, listening. And uh, if you have questions, I'll be happy to answer.